A while back we looked at this problem. Is the number of jelly beans in this jar divisible by three? We solved that problem using a finite state automaton, a set of rules for going through our input one by one and cycling through a series of states. If we landed on an accepting state, we knew we could accept our input. In this case, it meant we knew our jelly beans numbered some multiple of three. Then we asked another question. Is our input an alternating series of red and green jelly beans? We wrote another FSA that solved that problem. Then we asked a third question. Is our input an equal number of red and green jelly beans in any order? The thing is, with just a handful of states, we can't actually remember how many red jelly beans we saw. You can always throw more red jelly beans at me than I can handle. And that's why, unlike the other problems we've been looking at, this one can't be solved by a finite state automaton. Today, we're going to talk about what can solve that problem for us. Today, we're going to transcend the finite. Today, we're gonna to talk about pushdown automata. A pushdown automaton is another kind of automaton. It's a theoretical robot that follows a few simple rules. When we looked at finite state automata, we saw that each rule looked at two things. The current input, and the state that it was currently in. Pushdown automata are similar. They take some input, in this case a series of jelly beans, and they have state, just like a finite state machine. Although in these examples, we're actually gonna use one state for everything, so I'm not even gonna show it here. Because the really interesting thing is what pushdown automata have and finite state automata don't, and that is the stack. The stack lives over here. The stack is a series of symbols. It starts empty, like this, but we can push values onto it, adding one to the top. And we can push another item onto it, adding one to the top. We can also pop something off of it to remove it. Now the stack can be as big as we need it to be. Unlike with a finite state machine, we have infinite possibilities for state here. But the rule is we can only interact with the top of the stack. So if we have several things on the stack, we don't get to know what's at the bottom. We only get to know what's at the top. The stack is also what's gonna give us our answer. Remember, with a finite state machine, it's about what state it lands in. When it lands in the right state, that means we can accept our input. We can answer yes. In this case, we're gonna to look to the stack. When we get to the end of our jelly beans, if the stack is empty, like this, then we accept our input. We say, yes, there was an equal number of red and green jelly beans. If the stack is not empty, like this, then we say, no, there was not an equal number of red and green jelly beans, and we reject our input. So let's get some jelly beans. We start here at the first red jelly bean. These are our rules. The first thing here is the input, the jelly bean that we're looking at. The next thing is what's at the top of the stack. The last thing is what we're gonna do with the stack. So let's look at this first rule. We have a red jelly bean. We have an empty stack. That's what this symbol means. So that means we want to push red onto the stack. What's next? We have a red jelly bean again, but now the top of the stack is red. So we go to the second rule. Red jelly bean, red on the top of the stack. We do the same thing, we push red onto the stack. Now the next jelly bean is green. So we look at our green rules. We have green with red on top of the stack. That tells us to pop off the stack. So we pop that red off the stack, shortening the stack. And the next jelly bean, that's green too. We still have a red on top, so we do the exact same thing. We pop off the top of the stack. Now do you see what we just did? We kept track of how many red jelly beans we saw, up to two. And as we saw green jelly beans, we checked them off the stack. At this point, we've seen an equal number of red and green jelly beans, and our stack is empty. Empty means, yes, we've seen an equal number of red and green jelly beans, but we have more jelly beans to go, so let's keep going. Next we see red. So red, empty stack, and we push red. Then we see green. Green, red on top we pop red. But now we see another green and an empty stack. Well, our rule for green and an empty stack is to push green. Now we're keeping track of how many green jelly beans we've seen over the number of red jelly beans we've seen. We see another green jelly bean. Green with green already on the stack. 
now we have two green symbols on the stack. And when we see red now, red with green on the stack means pop. And now we've reached the end of our input. So, did we have an equal number of red and green jelly beans? Well, our stack isn't empty, so no, we must not have. But what can we do about that? We could add one red jelly bean to our input. Now we see red, red with green on the stack. So we pop green off the stack. There we go, our stack is empty. We must have an equal number of red and green jelly beans. And sure enough, there we go, there's five of each. Counting jelly beans is great, but let's try something a little more practical. In programming and in math, we have parentheses. Lots and lots of parentheses. And parentheses nest. You have parentheses inside of parentheses. And open parentheses have closed parentheses. They have to match up. But it's not just that you need an equal number of open and closed parentheses. If there isn't one open, you can't close it. You can't make a finite state automaton that will validate your parentheses for you, but you can make a pushdown automaton. We're gonna do that right now. Our input is going to be a series of parentheses. You can imagine there are things in between the parentheses, but we don't care about them. We're just focusing on these. So the inputs we can see are open parentheses and closed parentheses. Now we're also going to use parentheses as our stack symbols, just like we use these color pieces with the jelly beans. We're going to use an open parenthesis to mean that we have an open parenthesis hanging around. So when the stack is empty and we see an open paren, we're going to push an open paren onto the stack. When the stack already has an open paren, we're going to push an open paren onto the stack. So far this is just like red. The difference is we're never going to push closed parentheses onto the stack because we never are going to have more closed parentheses than open at any time. So if we see a closed parenthesis and there's an open parenthesis on the stack, that means we're closing it. So all we do there is pop it off so we don't track it anymore. And what if we do see a closed parenthesis and an empty stack? Well, that's what this is for. We'll get to that in a moment. Okay, let's go through this. We start with an open parenthesis and an empty stack. So we push a paren onto the stack. Then we see another open parenthesis, and now there's an open parenthesis on the stack. That's okay, we do the same thing. We push an open parenthesis onto the stack. Then we see a third, and we do the same thing. We're now tracking three expressions that are hanging open. And look, we've closed one. We see a closed parenthesis, we have an open one on the stack, and that means we pop. Then another open, then another close, and another close. We've reached the end of our input. Do we have balanced parentheses? Stack says no, the stack's not empty. There's still a symbol on top. So we reject our input. Now just like before, what if we changed our input? What if we added a closed parenthesis? Well, we look at that, we pop this off the stack, and now our stack is empty. So we can say, yes, these parentheses are balanced. Now, what if we had another closed parenthesis? Well, now the stack is empty, meaning everything's resolved, and we have a closed parenthesis. That doesn't make a lot of sense. We need to reject that. And our rule here says that if we see a closed parenthesis when the stack is empty, we push X onto the stack. What does that mean? We don't have the symbol X in our rules anywhere. Well, technically these aren't all the rules. Just imagine that there's a rule for every combination with X on the stack. But that rule always says, leave X on the stack. Don't touch the stack. What that means is, once X gets on the stack, there's no way out. There's no way to win. We can't empty the stack because there is no rule that takes X off the stack. That means that once we see too many closed parentheses, our input will never be valid. The parentheses can't be right. And look, there's nothing we can add to the end of this that makes it valid. The only way to make this valid is to go back to the beginning and add an open paren. But at this point, it's too late. There's nothing we'll see that would make us want to get rid of this X. Okay, one more. Let's make a pushdown automaton that tells us if our input contains, in any order, an equal number 
of red, green, and blue jelly beans. It's not clear what the rules should be, so let's start with the jelly bean rules we used before and adapt them on the fly. So we start with a red jelly bean, and that means we push red onto the stack. Next, we have a green jelly bean, and so following our rules from before, we pop red off of the stack. That says we've seen an equal number of red and green jelly beans. Now we see a blue jelly bean, and what do we do? Well, we could push blue onto the stack. That seems reasonable. But that's the end of our input. And our input should have accepted because it had exactly one of each color jelly bean. But there's something on the stack, so we don't accept. We answer no, and that's wrong. The problem is we want the blue jelly bean to sort of check off the green and the red jelly beans just the way the green one checked off the red one. But by the time we get to the blue jelly bean, the stack is empty and we don't remember those anymore. So maybe that was a mistake. Maybe for this machine, we shouldn't have green pop the red off the stack. So here's the red, and here we are at green, and maybe we should just push green onto the stack, right? We keep track of both of them. So now we know that we've seen one red and one green. The problem is, we only have access to the top of the stack, so while the memory of that red is somewhere in the back of our minds, we can't access it when we go to blue. Instead, all we see is that we have green at the top of the stack. Uh, maybe we pop that green off the top of the stack, but then we're left with red. Or maybe we push blue onto that, but that's just worse. Now we have three things in the stack when we want none. It turns out there's no way to solve this problem with a pushdown automaton. Even though we have infinite space in our stack, the fact that we can only access the top of it means that we can't track three things at the same time like this. There is, as you may have guessed, something a little more powerful that can. You may have heard of it. It's called a Turing machine. But Turing machines, well, that's a topic for another video. Thanks for watching The Binary Tree. Hey, this week is VidCon, and I'm gonna be there. If you're gonna be there, I'd love to say hello. Leave a comment below or find me on Twitter. And until next time, keep your syntax straight and your brackets balanced.